Fall is here and it is time to slow down. It is okay to feel a little tired after a long season of planting, nurturing, and harvesting. And now I am ready to preserve all the food in the easiest way that I can. The garden is ready and grab that cozy sweater and let's take one last walk through to the garden and go ahead and preserve our food for the winter. I love the garden and don't get me wrong, it is absolutely beautiful. The experience is amazing from growing the seeds to planting them and seeing them grow and now harvesting. But I do get exhausted and I need a month or so of just resting before I start planting my garden for next year. But I need to go ahead and harvest a lot today. All of these flowers are doing so good. I do have to show you, look how this lettuce is looking. This is the Merlot lettuce. And you saw me planting these. They're looking so good. Pretty much, I'm going to have to probably start taking all these petunias out. They're growing like crazy and it's out, but you can see that they're not flowering because it's just too cool out. Let's start with these peppers. Some of them are super tiny, but I do have some that are getting larger. That's the Chardonnay. These are the purple peppers. So you can see there's some cucumbers back here. Got some really nice Chardonnay peppers and I think I'm gonna leave there's a lot of smaller ones I'm gonna leave them because I think they're too small I'm gonna wait a little longer to come and harvest those because it's going to be sunny I think most of the week so I'm gonna do this purple I have to show you if you want a delicious pepper these shishito peppers are so good I roast them but look two plants are completely full of peppers just two plants I have harvested so much out of here there's another plant right here I mean there's so many I can't even keep out they start turning red they're supposed to be spicy when they turn red they're so delicious. I'm gonna try to harvest as many as I can today. The season was filled with so many emotions for me, whether it was joy or a little impatience <laughs> and so many lessons on the way. I was able to understand that I need to cherish every moment whether there were the imperfections on the fruit I grow or even not getting anything because it might not have gotten warm enough. I have learned to slow it down and find joy in the small victories and cherish every step of the way. Look at this purple cabbage. It's doing so good. This is the only one that's form ahead. These are like super tiny still. But which is weird because this is the shallow green stalk and this is the deeper. So maybe this one got a little more sun than the other one. 
There's one on the back. This one and this one doesn't have much of anything formed. This one is doing amazing. I'm gonna leave it a little longer. If you're new here, I have to tell you my favorite tomato ever is the orange accordion tomato. It is so delicious and it's so beautiful. I'm about to show you how beautiful this tomato is and it's not even ready yet, but take a look. Look at this incredible tomato. They grow really large and they get super, super bright orange. They're stunning. This one down here is even bigger. And uh, they're really late this year because of the weather, but I have like five of them in here and I'm gonna leave them. I could put them on a counter to ripen, but I think I'm gonna give them a few more days because they're doing fantastic. So I think I'm gonna leave these alone, but are those not the most beautiful tomatoes you've ever seen? They're so pretty. They're a work of art. They barely have any seeds. So if you like tomatoes that are not super watery, these are super meaty, hardly any seeds. So if you get them, you know that you're not gonna have a ton of seeds. So I try to save the seeds from them and that's what I grow. They're just the best tomato ever. I don't do any canning. I just don't have the space to store all of that. And I have done the water bath. My friend taught me how to do it, but I wanna keep things even more simple. So I'm gonna show you the best methods I have found and try some new ones that I think you are going to love and use a lot as you preserve your food in your tiny urban backyard. I first like to sort through all of the fruit that I've harvested and clean it. You can use white vinegar if you want with some water. I just use water. I check them to make sure they're pretty clean. And then I let them sit outside and dry really well before I start chopping or storing anything. I found this tool and it's to core tomatoes and I saw it on a video on YouTube and it has this teeth on it and you can core the fruit so much easier. I really love this. I used to use a knife and with this, it takes no time. I core the tomatoes so that I can take them out of the freezer since I store them whole and then the peel will come right off and I can just make soups and other dishes with them. But this saved me a ton of time 
way way easier i think this little inexpensive tool is a really good one to have As I'm preserving all of this food, I can't help to be honored that I was able to grow so much in such a tiny space. I just have so many memories from this season. It was an amazing season because I tried so many new things. And now I have a little reminder for the winter of what I went through and what I was able to accomplish. I'm ready to carry these memories. It's really precious to me. Here I'm going to be trying this vacuum sealing system and they bring different bags. It also brings the little extra tags for this in case something happened. And that is the size of the vacuum machine itself, which I loved. I don't want to buy a huge machine to have to store. It brings the clips to close the bags and then little clips that you can use and a charger. It is great for small harvest, but know that it is not if you have a big homestead, this will wear out the battery pretty quickly if you have to do that. The bags are a nice thickness. They're not super thin, so they're not going to fall apart easily. I'm absolutely falling in love with this. They come out so good. For preserving, this is going to be my favorite right now. I'm trying this with you and I am in love. Just place your vegetable and you don't fill it all the way. You want to, I do it up to like here. So that's plenty there. And then you close it. Use the little clip that it brings to make sure it's completely sealed. it all the way down to those little ridges align make sure if you want to do it a few times just to make sure it's completely sealed and then you just place this down aligning the hole with the center of it and then turn it on and that's it it's incredibly easy and now i have these tomatoes that i can use with peppers and make tomato bell pepper soup in the winter that's it and you can label before if you like but I don't need to label I know what that is it's perfect and they have different sizes of bags that I showed you so here's three of them already done the bell peppers I'm going to go ahead and chop them so I'm gonna cut them in like little squares because that way it's easy to use when we need them. We can bring a bag out to cook. You can do rings, however, you know, you can do them slicing like this. Or bigger, bigger pieces if you want to roast them later. But these, I'd much rather go ahead and chop them, have them ready to cook. I mean, tiny pieces are long like this. I'm going to use mine for soups mainly, like to saute for stir fry. So long, long pieces, bigger pieces are fine. Getting all of these bagged to go into the freezer and prepared and 
I have to tell you, I'm blown away. This is so good. These are definitely bags and little gadget that I am going to cherish forever. This is super, super easy and I don't have to have a big machine, which I did not want to buy. So I am totally happy with how this is working. It's working way better than I ever thought it would. Like the bell peppers, I'm doing them strips. So you can use them as stir fries. And then I'm doing some larger chunks. So if I can use these in stews and or in soups and the tomatoes i have them by greens or red just because i can do some different types of soups with them so i'm really excited it really is an amazing little gadget it is super quick now i decided that i am not going to put away the shishito peppers because i think we'll eat them very quickly this week so those are the only ones that are not going into the freezer but everything else is going to be going but I'm excited. Isn't it great when you find a gadget that really works? A couple of things that I do bring indoors, even if they're not ready, are peppers and tomatoes. So if you are running short on time because you're going to have a freeze, go ahead and harvest them because they mature inside and go ahead and ripe them indoors. And uh, they do just fine. So I'll show you an example right now. This is the choricero pepper that you can make paprika out of it. So I brought it in when it was kind of orangey like this and green and they're turning already red. So I'm going to be drying these to make paprika out of them. I'm going to allow these to just keep going and turn red, but I do have all these. So I'm going to wash them and I will also process those. The other thing I want to remind you is to make sure that you are saving the seeds. That way you don't have to buy a new one. Here's how many seeds you can get. Look how many out of this is one bell pepper. So this is the Chardonnay pepper and this is the purple one. And I can share them with friends even if you don't grow them, it's great. An easy way to go ahead and preserve the food that you harvest, especially if you do it daily or every few days, is to use the silica packages and they're food grade so they keep the moisture away so that your whatever you're harvesting and storing will not get ruined and will last a lot longer i use it for both dry and i will show you that if i dry something and i place it in my cupboard and i also use it for frozen foods i just keep it on this jar and it does just fine on frozen food, I use a thicker type of bag and I place the silica packet in it and look at the color. Everything in there, tomatoes and pepper are doing great. I store my chamomile on these containers and this is also from last year and I'm still using it to have teas and it is really good still to this time that has passed is great I use it for calendula and I need to go ahead and do the flowers that I'm going to be harvesting next but in the chamomile I just go ahead and place them in this container and let them dry they're so tiny I don't put them in the dehydrator it's just there and I just mix it once in a while as I come by since it's something that I just harvest almost daily and uh, it, it works just as good as if you put it on the dehydrator you just have to make sure that it's completely dry before you store it and you can put one of those packets in the jar
My sweet friend Ellie harvested her mushrooms and gave me some and I went ahead and dehydrated them in the dehydrator and I'm gonna put a package on it for the silica and to keep it moisture free and go ahead and store them. What an honor, little garden. Thank you for all you gave this year.